here. I've got another question uh, from the question bank in topic 2.1 motion. We're going to be dealing with equations of motion. This question is about kinematics, as it says. Uh, Lucy stands on the edge of a vertical cliff and throws a stern, stone vertically upwards. Up into the air, and then comes straight back down, like that. So the stone leaves her hand with a speed of 15 meters per second at the instant her hand is 80 meters above the surface of the sea. So she throws the ball up here at an initial velocity of 15 meters per second. Meanwhile, she's 80 meters above the sea. Air resistance is negligible and the acceleration of free fall is 10 meters per second squared. We want to calculate the maximum height reached by the stone as measured from the point where it's thrown. So how high above her hand does the stone get? This is a uh, equations of motion question. I know that because of the scenario. I'm traveling with a constant acceleration in a straight line. Now you may not think it's a straight line because the stone reverses direction, but it is. You can reverse direction just as long as you form a single line. So if this is an equation of motion question, then I need four of the five quantities in equations of motion. That's u, v, initial velocity, final velocity, acceleration, a, time, t, and displacement, s. Displacement is what I'm looking for. I want to know how far the stone goes. So that's my unknown quantity. The initial velocity is 15 meters per second. But if I say that it's 15 meters per second, then what I've also said is that upwards is the positive direction. And downwards, then, is the negative direction. And if downwards is the negative direction, then the acceleration is negative 10 meters per second squared. Okay, uh, I have three things, u, a, and s. The last one would either be time or velocity. I don't know much about time, and it doesn't seem that I know much about velocity either. The final velocity, though, will be zero. Because when the stone reaches its peak, it goes up, and then it stops before it turns around. It has to reach zero velocity at this spot up at the top for it to turn around, for it to go from a, a positive velocity to a negative velocity. So at the peak of travel, the velocity is zero. So what equation of motion has S, A, U, and V? That's V squared equals U squared plus 2AS. Now this I can solve for s. I'll move u squared and uh, I'll move u squared to the other side. Divide by 2a. That gives me s equals v squared take u squared over 2a. U squared is 15. Oh no, excuse me. V is is zero. Take u squared, which is 15, divided by 2. A. This gives me negative uh, 225 on negative 20, or 11.25. That rounds to 11.3, and we're working in uh, SI units, so that's going to be meters. Oh, pardon me, I'm working on this new pen. It's a little tough. All right. Part B says to determine the time for the stone to reach the surface of the sea after leaving Lucy's hand. Well, this is still an equations of motion question. We're still traveling in a straight line with a constant acceleration. We just want to know 
how long it takes for the stone to hit the sea. That's a displacement from here to here, a displacement of 80 meters. So I know S is 80 meters. I still know the acceleration, that's negative 10 meters per second squared. And I still know the initial velocity. That's 15 meters per second. I don't know the final velocity, but that's okay. I don't need it. I have my three knowns. Time is my unknown. So what equation of motion has these four quantities? That's going to be S equals UT plus one half a t squared. We'll try and solve this for t. We know s is negative 80, u is 15, and uh, 1 half a negative 10 t squared. And we see what looks like a quadratic. We have t We have t here, and t squared here. Yeah, that's a quadratic. All right, so we'll rearrange. We'll multiply 1 half by negative 10. That gives us negative 5t squared plus 15t. We'll bring the negative 80 to the other side, plus 80 equals 0 to make this look like a quadratic. Now, this term out front, I'll divide by negative 5. 0 equals t squared, take 3t, take 16. Now this quadratic doesn't appear to factorize. I don't think that there's anything that I can multiply together to give me 16 and add or subtract to give me negative 3. Not a whole number anyway. So I'm going to need the quadratic formula. t is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. Not the best handwriting. Okay, we'll keep working on that. Negative b, or b squared minus 4ac, all over 2a. All right. Now, quadratic formula always looks daunting, but we have to remember that there are only numeric terms in it. So it's something that we can plug right into the calculator and get two answers. Two because of the plus or minus. When we do that, we find that t can be negative 2.77 and or 5.77 to three significant figures. Now, are they both correct? Are one of them correct? Well, they're kind of both correct in a way, but having a negative time doesn't make much sense in this context. They're both solutions to the quadratic equation, but only one of them is a meaningful answer to the question, when does the stone hit the sea? And that's 5.77 seconds later. Well, not that one. 